আজকের আলাপের শিরোনাম হচ্ছে ডক্টিন অফ ডিসকভারি ও আন্তর্জাতিক আইনের উৎপত্তি তো আজকের আলাপে ঢোকার আগে আমি এমনিতে একটা শর্ট ইন্ট্রোডাকশান যেটা সেটা দিই আমাদের আমাদের ইংরেজি বিভাগ সহ আর বিভিন্ন ইংরেজি বিভাগে একটা পাঠ্য বই উপন্যাস সেটা মোটামুটি সবাই পড়ে তার নাম হচ্ছে হার্ট অফ ডার্কনেস এটা লেখা জোসেফ কনরাডের তো এই হার্ট অফ ডার্কনেসের যে প্রোটাগনিস্ট হিসেবে যাকে আপাতত ধরা যায় মারলো মারলো যখন বড় হচ্ছে মারলো ম্যাপে প্রচুর ফাঁকা জায়গা দেখে যে ম্যাপে অনেক ব্ল্যাঙ্ক স্পেস তো মারলো এরকম করে ভাবে আমি ওই ব্ল্যাঙ্ক স্পেসটাকে ডিসকভার করব এক্সপ্লোর করব তার মধ্যে একজন এক্সপ্লোরেশনের নেশা তাই মারলো এক মারলো নয় একেবারে ফিফটিন সেঞ্চুরি থেকে শুরু করে এইটিন সেঞ্চুরি পর্যন্ত এরকম অজস্র মারলো জন্ম নিয়েছে ইউরোপে যারা ডিসকভার করতে চেয়েছে যে ওয়েস্টের বাইরে কে সেটা ডিসকভার করব এই ডিসকভারি এবং এক্সপ্লোরেশনের আরলেই মূলত কলোনাইজেশনের গোটা ঘটনাটা ঘটে তো আজকে আমাদের আলাপের যে বিষয় ডক্টিন অফ ডিসকভারি ডক্টিন অফ ডিসকভারি প্রথম আসে ফিফটিন লেট ফিফটিন সেঞ্চুরিতে এর সাথে একটা গুরুত্বপূর্ণ ঘটনা হচ্ছে ট্রিটি অফ তর্দেশিয়াস এটা স্পেনের একটা জায়গা সেখানে হচ্ছে পর্তুগাল এবং কাস্তিল বর্তমান স্পেন তৎকালীন কাস্তিল এদের ভাগাভাগি হয় যে কে কোন অংশ নিবে স্যার নিশ্চয় আরও ডিটেলে আলোচনা করবেন এর ওপরে ভিত্তি করেই নাইনটিন সেঞ্চুরিতে আমেরিকাতে ডিসকভারি ডক্টরিন নামে একটা আইন বিল পাস হয় যেটার ওপরে যেটার ওপরে ভিত্তি করে অ্যাবরিজিনাল বা নেইটিভ যারা আছে তাদেরকে তাদের ল্যান্ড থেকে ল্যান্ডের ওপরে যে তাদের অধিকার সেটা থেকে বিচ্যুত করা হয় তো আমরা এই গোটা কলোনাইজেশনের প্রক্রিয়ার সাথে ডিসকভারি ডক্টরিন এবং ডিসকভারি ডক্টিন অফ ডিসকভারি এবং ডক্টিন অফ ডিসকভারি থেকে পরবর্তীতে আমেরিকা যে ডিসকভারি ডক্টরিন এবং তার সাথে আন্তর্জাতিক আইনের যে সম্পর্ক সেটা নিয়ে আজকে আমরা এই আলাপের আয়োজন তো আজকে আমাদের আয়োজনে পূর্ব সাধক হিসেবে উপস্থিত আছেন কে এম সাজ্জাদ মহসিন স্যার উনি আমাদের আইন ও বিচার বিভাগে পড়াচ্ছেন জাহাঙ্গীরনগর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে আমি আমাকে অলরেডি অবগত করা হলো যে পূর্ব সাধক বলে আমাকে রেফার করা হচ্ছে আমার কোনো সমস্যা নাই আমি আমি বিট ওভারওয়েল টু বি to be familiar with this uh, particular kind of terminology. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, Columbus, a bit of history and a bit of law. Uh, the extract that you have already been given, it's uh, from the letter that Columbus had written uh, to the Queen of Spain, having recently discovered the new world, which currently we understand to be North American territories. However, uh, Columbus was still mistaken. He thought he had reached India. And uh, the references that we are going to use throughout uh, the lecture, how long is the lecture going to take? Jaheed, how long are you going to allow me? Right, right. So over the next uh, 50 minutes or so, when we uh, talk about India, every time I refer to India, it needs to be understood as the new world, which is uh, the more than the uh, North American territories. Right, so can I ask each one of you to have a look at uh, the extract of the letter that you have already been given? So Columbus praises uh, his god. His god shabda da vayabhar kurtasi. Then he praises uh, the sovereigns, which uh, he refers as the queen of Spain. And then he tells us something uh, in terms of temporal framework first, because he says, in 33 days, starting from Canary Island, he has reached somewhere which he believes to be India. And why would you think that the Spanish exploration, headed by uh, Columbus, it would uh, sail westwards from the Canary Island? The answer has already given by uh, Jahid, has already been given by him. And he was referring to the Treaty of Tordesias uh, in 1493, 94, 
And of course, uh, there was another treaty uh, a few years later by the name of Treaty of Zaragoza. But these treaties, they are extremely important in under understanding the doctrine of discovery and a whole enterprise of colonialism. The Treaty of uh, Tordesillas, it settled a dispute between uh, Portugal and Spain. Because both these neighboring countries, they were engaged in vicious competition to explore into different parts of the world and find out and appropriate, that is important, that they not only explored to find out something, rather they explored to appropriate what they found. And it is also quite uh, interesting to note in uh, Jahid's intro, and he said that uh, Columbus was a paid, or rather perhaps I was having a chat with Arman, he might have said it. Uh, Columbus was a paid servant. He was a paid sailorman, right? Nonetheless, so these paid servants, whenever they found anything, it was part of their agreement that whatever they could find, a certain part of that findings would be given to them. So these explorers, they had great incentive to set sail into the unknown world of the ocean and find out what lied on the other side of the ocean. And what did the sovereigns acquire out of it? As I said, these, they were, uh, these sailormen, they were mostly paid employees. So someone had to pay. And the payment came from the sovereigns, which were in those days, of course, the king or the queen. And Spain being the most prosperous kingdom in the late 15th century, so a Spanish queen, she commissioned this exploration led by Christopher Columbus. I must say, he was a very educated man. Part of the University of Salamanca, which is the oldest university in Spain, still functioning today. So, Sailormen, particularly in case of Columbus, he took 10% of the proceeds that could have been realized out of the discovery that Columbus's exploration would be successful to make. So the equation was quite simple. Discover something, you get 10% of, of it, the remaining 90% goes to the sovereign, the patron. Atskedine university uh, teachers, we often apply for projects, we often apply for funding. Same circumstances, same set of situations also occurred in case of Columbus. He applied for this project, he was paid for it, he was uh, granted three ships to explore what lied on the other side uh, of the ocean. And we all know that in uh, uh, 1492, he discovered, uh, he thought it was India, but it was, um, in fact, the modern day uh, North American territories. Well, uh, so he started from Canary Island. Where is it? Any? Uh, knowledge about it? Where is Canary Island? Columbia? Not necessarily. I mean, it's, it would be very close to Africa, the, the northwestern uh, edge of Africa. It would be very close to it. Well, go back a few minutes, and I was telling you that there was a fierce competition between the Portuguese and the Spaniards about exploration because it was seen as a very profitable project. Uh, the Treaty of, uh, Treaty of Tordesillas divided the whole world into two parts. The west part of, uh, I think there was, there was a demarcation uh, of 70 units starting from Canary Island. So whatever light West of that line, west of that division, the Spaniards, they were granted exclusive right to explore 
and discover, and whatever they discovered, they were granted the right to possess them. So in the east of that division, whatever the Portuguese could discover, it was Portuguese, uh, Portuguese possession, and the Portuguese could realize whatever they could discover. So just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I'm imagining this to be, uh, what does it look like, by the way? Sorry? It actually should look like Africa. And uh, I'm imagining that Portugal would be somewhere here, and Spain would be like this. So what I'm saying, that the whole thing started from Canary Island, which would be a small little islands in this part of the world. And as I was saying, that in Treaty of Thordesius, the whole world was divided like this. So this would be the eastern part, and this would be the western part. But that was done in 1493. And we already know that Columbus had explored into the West in 1492. And he made this great discovery of the uh, Indians. The message was reported back to Spain. And the message uh, traveled very quickly and widely. And everybody knew that there were lots of things, lots of assets, lots of wealth to be discovered in certain other parts on the other side of the ocean. So Portugal, being a great exploring nation, they wanted to explore what lied on the other side of the ocean as well. But the thing is, two neighboring Christian countries, should they be allowed to compete with each other in trying to find out what was lying on the other side of the ocean? Because if that was the case, if it was allowed that the two neighboring Christian countries would be uh, allowed to compete with each other, who knows, there might be bloodshed, and that would mean that it would be Christian bloodshed on both sides. So the competition, the conflict was referred to the Pope, and the Pope came up with this decree, which is a, uh, a resolution of the dispute between the two parties, and the Pope said that Spain, whatever light on the west of this division, you can explore it, and whatever you can find, whatever you can discover, it would be your possession. And Portugal, they were given the right to explore in the east, and whatever Portugal could find would be Portuguese possessions. And we all know what the Portuguese did in the next few years. If, if uh, Christopher Columbus is the greatest or one of the greatest Sp Spaniard to explore into the sea, which name comes into your mind when I talk about Portugal? Who would be their greatest explorer? sure about it and of course he is the greatest Portuguese explorer when did Port, uh, Vasco da Gama make his greatest discovery within a few years right I think it was 1498 when he came to India going further east imagining that uh, this is somewhere that India would be. So go westwards, you can find North America, Central America and other territories, and go to east, you'd find Portuguese discoveries. And we all know the naval route to India was discovered by this Portuguese explorer. Why? because Portugal could only come to the east. They couldn't go to the west. So that's the settlement that uh, 
Jahid has already introduced us to. However, I want to go back uh, to Columbus's discovery of the North and, of course, the West. Uh, in this letter, Columbus writes to Isabella, and uh, he says that in 33 days, I have reached somewhere. And this is the interesting part where he says that I have found many islands filled with people innumerable, and I have taken possession for uh, taken possession of them for their highness. And then the chilling bit of it, he says, no opposition was offered to me. So he explored to the West, found North America. I mean, he found a number of islands. These islands were filled with even more number of people. And what he did, he had taken possession of all those people. I mean, suddenly, you get the feeling, or you should ask to get that feeling, that can people be taken possession of? I mean, what do you take possession of? You take possession of a cell phone. But now, Columbus is saying that he had taken possession of people innumerable, not only one or two, he has taken possession of innumerable people. And how did he take possession of these people that he found on those islands? He had taken possession of them by royal decree. And all those people, mostly I'm imagining, according to European standards, so please get that right, that according to European standard, most of these people, they would be savage. That'd be almost half nude or even full nude, who knows? So all those people, innumerable of course, they see, the, they see these white European men floating through the sea with three giant ships and they are doing something which they really don't have any understanding of. Right? They see these people, these Indian people see that these great, or, or at least what they thought that, that the Europeans, they were great, these white people traveling through all those ships, they're doing something really funny. They're bringing out a letter and reading it in a language that the Indians would really not understand. So that's the picture that would be available to the Indians. But that's not the picture, or that's at least not the significance of that particular scenario to Columbus and the Indians, uh, and the uh, Spaniards. Because the significance of bringing out a letter and reading it, of course, means that all those people are now being possessed. Right at a royal foreman, Berkure, she had a Pora Shurukul, of course, a Spanish lekam in the Hurin, say. So at a royal foreman, Berkure, Spanish kitchen at a Polo, Jet Indian Kichu Bosluna, but it had significance Indian de Juno Ekrocum, a Spanish de Juno Ekrocum, Spanish de Juno significance would say the Columbus Atogulo Manuske by reading that foreman, reading the decree, he has taken possession of all of them, including what those people had possessed. I would be assuming that at least that had meant for the Spaniards that they are also taking possession of the properties that the Indians were possessing, be that landed property or be that some other kind of property. And in all those things, great things, I mean, or things having greater significance. In among all this chaos, this is the chilling bit, as I said, and no opposition was offered to them. They are being taken possession of, including 
every bit of their property. And these people are not offering single bit of opposition. But for the Europeans, they're establishing their sovereignty over these people, mostly unknown to the civilized world up until that point. Right. What happened after that? We all know that it was not the most profitable investment that the Spaniards had ever made. Columbus had thought, or that is exactly what he had said in the University of Salamanca when he defended his idea of exploring into the new world. He had convinced the council of ministers, including the queen, that he can find a huge amount of gold if he is successful in discovering the new world. But of course, the result showed otherwise. It wasn't such a profitable investment, not that amount of gold which initially was perceived could be discovered in the new world. So they were quite disappointed. And also, the administration in the new world did not go that smoothly either. There was chaos, there was a breakdown of relationship between the Indians and the Spaniards within a few years. And there were a few instances of failed revolutions against the Spaniards. However, by that time, Columbus had turned from a skilled sail sailorman to perhaps an unskilled governor. He did not know how to counter a revolution, and he ended up killing a lot of in, uh, Indians, and of course, imprisoning a lot, many numbers as well. So, Columbus's initial idea, Jeremy, on a gold discover curve, I can make Spain a very prosperous nation, but all of a sudden that did not happen, of course, but then Columbus tried the other way around. He tried to find out what other resources he could find on those islands. And the other resources that he found on that island or those islands were, what could it be? He couldn't find gold, of course, but he found uh, a greater reservoir of other kind of resources, what would that be? Slaves. Of course. People innumerable. He started exporting slaves from the new world to the European world. And uh, things turned uh, to be really nasty in the next few years, and by the time uh, we entered into the 16th century, perhaps the Romans and the patience of the Spaniards with Columbus had faded away. Columbus was recalled to Spain, and uh, of course uh, was not given a resounding uh, uh, sort of reception because the Spaniards' love with Columbus had already, by that time, faded away. And um, after that, uh, nobody cared about Columbus. He died in almost ignorance, because nobody uh, really cared where he was living, what he was doing. And um, the Spaniards, uh, they were so frustrated, because for them, it was almost a failed investment uh, they were so frustrated that they uh, even wanted to wipe out the name of Columbus from the discovery of the new world. And of course, we all know who the next person was, or, or at least who the person uh, uh, who was credited with the discovery of the new world. We of course know the name of Amerigo Vespucci then. 
was even though a follower uh, of Columbus, but the Spaniards, uh, they were so frustrated this, that they decided to not to use Columbus's name anymore, rather to reward someone um, who initially started his career uh, as a subordinate to Columbus. But by, by what Columbus has had achieved, we had already entered into a new era of politics, new era of economics, and new era of uh, social sciences as thought. But most importantly, we had already entered into an era of international law. Because by that time, or before that time, I should say, nobody had to really care about international law because all they cared about was Europe. And Europe was more or less ruled by homogeneous set of rulers believing in homogeneous set of rules. Alternatively, I try to mean that almost the whole of Europe was Christian Europe, ruled by Christian rulers. So the rules applicable to the great majority of European territories was almost the same. So they really did not have to care about a different set of people, a different set of territory. And they, of course, did not have to think about applying or coming up with a framework consisting of different set of rules. But now they have to think about it. Because as I said, Christian, I mean, the whole of Europe can roughly be characterized as Christian. The Spaniards now have discovered a territory whose religion is not Christian. What would be the religion of the Indians? We don't know, but it was certainly not Christ Christianity. It was not certainly Christianity, of course. So if Christian Spaniards, they have to deal with non-Christian Indians, what law would govern the relationship? Because popularly, it was perceived that, uh, I mean, the fidels cannot enter into relationship with the non-fidels. And these Indians, they were categorized as infidels because they were non-Christians. So now we are entering into an era having a different legal question. Because when the European rulers, they are interacting with each other, they know what law to apply. It would be Christian law. But which law governs them? So now, within this vacuum, there were lots of thoughts. There were lots of suggestions. One of the dominant suggestions was, that Christian law shall govern even the infidels. In our case, Christian law shall apply vis-a-vis -vis the Indians. That was the dominant suggestion. But then the question arose, why shall Christian law apply to non-Christians? Christian law, essentially, like any other religious law, cannot apply to non-believers in that particular religion. So the very fact of trying to apply Christian law against the Indians, it was limited by its own argument, right? It was limited by its own argument. Quite simply, you cannot apply Christian law to the non-Christians. So now we are looking at a problem that can popularly be referred as the juridical problem of jurisdiction. So this might sound to be a legal jargon, which it is, but quite frankly, 
juridical problem of jurisdiction bolte etai bojhai which law governs right so in that particular scenario we couldn't apply christian law because these people were not christians but we needed law to govern the relationship between the spaniards and the indians and this great association uh, came from a very well known figure in legal discourse in the early 16th century uh, he is uh, none other than francisco de vitoria many of you i'm um, guessing might be familiar with you my students who are sitting over there i'm sure they have heard me speak about Francisco de Vitoria on a great number of times in my classes. So who was Vitoria? Again, someone who was associated with the University of Salamanca and a servant of God, a believer in Christianity, of course. And he was assigned with, it, with this task of trying to come up with a framework of law that could equally govern the Spaniards and the Indians because religious law could not govern both the parties and he tried to come up with a legal framework uh, based on at least two uh, major themes I popularly refer in my classes that these two twin principles can be referred as differentiation and equalization. So in case of differentiation, which was the primary project of Vitoria, or the first project of Vitoria, it's quite obvious. Are the Indians different vis-a-vis -vis the Spaniards? Are they different? The difference is well manifested. They are different because they are part of a different cultural strata. They are part of a different cultural makeup. They believe in a different religion for a start their clothing, their food, their other beliefs, their culture, all are different. Their way of life is different compared to the way of life that the Spaniards are associated to or used to living. So Vitoria quite easily accomplishes this task of differentiation by reliance to cultural differences because they are religiously different in terms of food, clothing, and their achievement in civilizational scale, they're at a much lower, in fact, they are at the lowest, uh, lowest position in terms of a scale of civilization. The Spaniards, they thought, in the late 15th century, early 16th century, they thought they had achieved the highest level of civilization. So compared to their highest level of civilization, the Indians and where they were, they were at the bottom of it. So the differentiation between the highest and the lowest, it could be so easily perceived. Almost the differentiation was at a level that you really could touch that difference. What I mean to say, the differentiation might actually uh, symbolically become a tang tangible aspect between the Spaniards and the Indians. I mean, I mean, I know, yeah, um, uh, on a, kuno, again, Duruburti Kuno at literature, I took a Purislam de Ondukarnaki, Jomat Batte Pare. So, to that extent, that you can really touch darkness. So, I'm uh, trying to. Uh, argue in that same line of thinking that Duita uh, people 
Spaniards and uh, the Indians, tadir modhe particularly cultural ground there, differentiation at toi beshi, jeta actually tangible level, almost you could touch that difference. Uh, that is what I mean to say. So if that is the case, that they were different, that of course reinforces the initial problem of juridical problem of jurisdiction. Because they are different, so different law governs. So Tate Kure, Vittoria, task jeta, tarja assignment, sheta accomplished hutena. So Tate ki different bolate, borong uishamashata aru prokot hutse, jeta are different law dorkar. So then Vittoria enters into that, uh, enters into his next assignment. Uh, which is the project of uh, equalization. So this culturally different Indian vis-a-vis -vis the Spaniards, can they be equalized vis-a-vis -vis the Spaniards? That's his second task. Well, Vittoria then says, so look, the Spaniards, they're human beings. The Indians, they are also human beings. So I'm not the commonality jagatikori, both the Spaniards and the Indians, they are human beings. What common content can we find? Common content duta people ke human being is a bit in the gori. Sorry? Uh, well, God is the actor. Indian God is the actor. Or at least Christian God is the actor. So, God, God is the actor. This argument is the actor. Because Indian God and Christian God are perhaps not the same God. Because uh, Indian, uh, Indian they are uh, heathens, right? They are infidels. They are uh, fire worshippers, stone worshippers. They have uh, completely uh, weird practices. They are snake eaters. Uh, they are cannibals. Right. So, of course, uh, thinking uh, on the strength of God being the common point of mingling between the two people, that doesn't help. Yeah. So that's the common element that Victoria finds. So Jemuhute, I mean, they are Indian, they are human being. Spaniards, of course, they are human being. So Jodi Duta people are human being, the common content, minimum common content that they should possess is human reasoning. So Spaniards, other human reasoning apply kore they have reached to the highest level of civilization. Then Victoria says, Indian people, their common reasoning, reasoning capacity, has they achieved anything? Or rather, I should ask, has they even exercised it? Victoria had doubt that Indians, they had even exercised their human reasoning capacities. So, what is the thing that is that on a cultural scale, these two people are different. Now they are being elevated from that lowest rock bottom point of the scale of civilization to, uh, to a level of equal footing because both the Spaniards and the Indians are capable of using their human reasoning capacities. So now they become equal. Well, the point being, since they are equal, so look at what achievements that the Spaniards have made and look what inadvancement or backwardness that has defined the Indians. So, justification to say, equally high, 
তাহলে একটা সভ্যতার শিখরে পৌঁছালো আর একটা কেন রক বটম পর্যায়ে পড়ে থাকবে সো দ্যাট স্ট্যাবলিশেস দ্য অথরিটি অফ দ্য স্প্যানিয়ার্স টু এক্সারসাইজ দেয়ার ক্যাপাসিটি আমরা লিগাল ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজে অনেক ক্ষেত্রে গার্ডিয়ানশিপ পিপলেজ শব্দগুলো ব্যবহার করি সো দ্যাট গেভস দ্য স্প্যানিয়ার্স দ্য রাইট টু এক্সারসাইজ পিপলেজ গার্ডিয়ানশিপ ওভার দিস পিপল আই মিন টু সে ওভার দিস ইন্ডিয়ান্স অল অফ এ সাডেন দে আর ডিফারেন্ট দে আর ইকুয়াল নাও দে আর নট ইকুয়াল বিকজ দে আর মাইনর আই মিন আমি এক্সপেক্ট করতেছি গ্রেটার আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ডিং ওয়েন আই টক অ্যাবাউট মাইনরিটি আই মিন এগেন একটা লিগাল ডেফিনিশন আছে যাদের যারা আমাদের আইনের ভাষায় অ্যাটলিস্ট আঠারো বছর বয়স অ্যাটেন্ড করে নি তাদেরকে আমরা মাইনর বলতে চাই এবং ওয়ান অফ দ্য লিগাল কনসিকুয়েন্সেস অফ বিং এ মাইনর ইজ দ্যাট ইউ ক্যান নট এন্টার ইন্টু এ কন্ট্রাক্ট রাইট ওয়াই শুদন্ত এ মাইনর বি অ্যালাউ টু এন্টার ইন্টু এ কন্ট্রাক্ট আরই trying to say that a minor during his minority is insane of course no even during his minority a person does not remain an insane rather what we are suggesting that during his minority despite having sanity and reasoning his power of reasoning might not be a matured one so despite having capacity of reasoning he might miss out on certain vital points having greater consequence prejudicial of course to his own interest so what we are trying to say that these people can think independently but at times they cannot appreciate their best interest so someone else has to think about their best interest and of course minor kitchen category we have guardians we have parents so parents minor their their chile me their bachcha their best interest ki hote pare they decide on behalf of those minor children but nonetheless amra jodi ইকুয়ালিটির জায়গা থেকে হিউম্যান বিয়িংয়ের জায়গা থেকে চিন্তা করি উই আর নট গোয়িং টু সে দ্যাট এ মাইনর চাইল্ড ইজ নট ইকুয়াল টু এন অ্যাডাল্ট ওয়ান অর আর উই গোয়িং টু সে দ্যাট মাইনর সে হিউম্যান বিয়িং আর অ্যাডাল্ট হিউম্যান বিয়িং আমরা কি তাদেরকে ইনুকুয়াল মনে করতেছে অ্যাজ হিউম্যান বিয়িংস বাট আমরা তাদের application of reasoning to appreciate the best interest that they can they can or cannot protect for themselves based on that we are trying to say that someone else has to think for those minors so now though having established that second aspect of equalization yes the indians are equal to the spaniards we are saying or at least vitoria said that indians are minors they have reasoning capacity but they have consistently failed to appreciate and protect their best interest so they need guardians and who would be their guardians the spaniards or european civilized people and what would be the task of these guardians the task of these guardians would be to make sure or guide these minor people in a way that they can attain the same level of civilization that the european nations have already achieved so a european guardian there particularly amader alochonar sathe relevant spaniard der daitto hote এই আনসিভিলাইজড ইন্ডিয়ানদেরকে সভ্যতার সেই পর্যায়ে পৌঁছানো 
যেটা ইন্ডিয়ানরা তার নিজেদের রিজনিং ক্যাপাসিটি ব্যবহার করে পৌঁছাতে ব্যর্থ হচ্ছে রাইট ওয়েল হাউ ক্যান উই দেন সে দ্যাট দ্য ইন্ডিয়ান্স হ্যাভ ফেইল টু এক্সারসাইজ দেয়ার রিজনিং ক্যাপাসিটি টু প্রোটেক্ট দ্য বেস্ট ইন্টারেস্ট ফর দেমসেলভস ভিটোরিয়া আইডেন্টিফাইড যে তারা সিরিয়াসলি ফেল করেছে কারণ তাদের নিজস্ব কোনো লিগাল সিস্টেম নেই দে ডোন্ট হ্যাভ দেয়ার ওন মেজিস্ট্রেটস দে ডোন্ট হ্যাভ দেয়ার ওন লজ দে ডোন্ট হ্যাভ লজ গভর্নিং প্রপার্টি রাইটস দে ডোন্ট হ্যাভ লজ গভর্নিং ম্যারিটাল রিলেশনশিপস দে ডোন্ট হ্যাভ লজ টু কন্ডাক্ট সিভিলাইজড বিজনেস ট্রানজাকশনস So then, then again, I mean, you need law to fill in that uh, a void that I am talking, to, talking about. Again, what would be the basis of that law? Religion to hote par bena, and religiously they are different. Again, ek to a grammar, equalization framework, jet I am bula chi. Human reasoning, amra law language babhar kori jet I am puchuli to sense. ইউজ জেন্টিয়াম জাস্ট জেন্টিয়াম অনেকে বলেন সো জাস্ট জেন্টিয়াম রিজনিং ক্যাপাসিটি দ্যাট উড বি দ্য বেসিস অফ দ্য ল দ্যাট উড বি অ্যাপ্লিকেবল টু দ্য স্প্যানিয়ার্স ভিজ এ ভি দ্য ইন্ডিয়ান্স এজ ওয়েল সো নাও ফ্রম এ লিগাল ভয়েড দ্যাট দেয়ার ওয়ার নো গভার্নিং ল উই আর এন্টারিং ইন টু এন এরা where there in fact can be a framework of law but this framework of law is not based on any other uh, foundation rather it is based on the ontological attribute that the indians and the spaniards both possessed the human reasoning capacity of course But a bit earlier, I was telling you that the Indians, they did not have property rights or they didn't have a settled framework of law governing property rights. But why were the Spaniards in India in the first place? Well, two major reasons why they were there. They claimed themselves to be uh, ambassadors of Christianity, their own religion. And of course, they were there for business purposes. Well, now that the Indians, they are on the verge of entering into business transactions with the Spaniards. And of course, any kind of business between the two people would require transfer of whatever they owned, transfer of their properties. And what property did the Indian people have so abundantly? If Indian people, they actually keep property. Thakte bare. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Jewel to our mom, Pasha. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Land. Land. Yeah, of course. Land. Well, in case of any business transaction to be successful between the Indians and the Spaniards, the only tradable property that the Indians had was the land. But they didn't have any land law or any sort of law governing their property relationships. Well then, the question then it, it was asked that if these people are in possession of these lands, can we safely say that they are also the owners of these lands? Because think of North America, it's a huge territory. 
So even though people innumerable live there, compared to the vastness of the land, it was too little in terms of number, right? And of course, with those little number of people, less number of people, it was impossible for all those people to be in effective control of all those vast territories. Well, perhaps I'm leading you to think into a much advanced scenario, but if I have to rein myself a bit earlier, I'd be interested to ask, what is the title of these Indians in relation to this land? Are they owners? Are they mere users? Are they occupiers? Or, they, or are they people in possession only? So if I scale down the options into two concrete one, the options would be, are they owners? or are they mere users without being owners? Does it make sense then? Tara a property, a domain, land property, eglu tara malik ki na, na ki tara malik na ho shato, tara just eglu ke use kore. Jeku na ayanchino na tada ke malik tara jaya. Jeku no? That's exactly the argument that the Europeans used. That title, I mean, which is um, uh, ownership in a popular uh, sense. Uh, I don't want to be right on legal sense, it's strictly. But popularly, title, ownership, amra synonym asishabe jodi chindagori. That is exactly the argument that the Europeans used. Since they did not have any settled law, governing property relations. So how can they claim to be the owners of that land? Well, so what other option, what alternative did the, uh, what alternative was left to the Indians then? So Amrajyoti Dhoreni, they cannot be owners. What is the other alternative? They're users without being owners. So they are users in possession without being owners. So now, Amader e duita non legal sense, Amrajudi property relation take a defined court, the Indian their property shatata relationship to user relation are. European there, a land is a property is that other relationship. What kind of relationship do they have? Discovery, right? The whole title of today's talk, discovery. They have discovered this land, and the Indians they are in possession of this land. They are using this land but they cannot be owners of it because they don't have any law establishing or evidencing their title to it. Right? So amra, akhuni duita factor mudhe greater normative value jaya theke kunta ke chinta kurta bari. User as a normative value and discovery as a normative value. answer at user. But user it could be Tunkuna when I am at a use to see to me to my hat the Java to me at a use to so so Amar Ami Johan use to see the Amar to Johan use to see the Honet Amar. I'm sorry? Indian culture key user title. I bolt that soon like a title now. European 
more or less like advantages because they have already established that, that these people do not have a legal framework. Right? So all they have, if I'm a legal sense, all they have is a right of user. Just like, just like we are using this room now. Doesn't mean that we are owners of it. Mm. So, well, user Oshuvitha Jeta, Sheta Hotseta, transitory in nature. Transitory nature, both the Shamoi, the Apeki Kothar Jevapata. So, Indian the title take European policy jaga take she take a jota durbol koraja, putum durbol kor aghat hutsi jeta de lonai. Dithio aghat durbol kor moto aghat hutsi jeta de transitory user right. So it a jekonoshan passover koraja. Othoba, I'm jodi hutsi in the gori. If user is the basis of your right, what happens when you stop using it? So, I mean, I cell phone use it, so I have a property. So, I have a stop, uh, use it, stop it. The user is the basis, then I have a use bond of the title. So, of course, uh, the other option that was left was that of discovery. Uh, he has already talked about in his intro uh, that this doctrine of discovery as a normative basis of land right was recognized in the US and it was recognized as a normative basis of title in the US in the 19th century. 19th century, the, uh, 1823, the, there was a case between two white men, two European white men, Johnson versus Macintosh. I'm expecting my students to be all familiar with uh, Chief Justice Marshall, the most celebrated or one of the most celebrated of the US judges because of Marbury versus Madison, of course. But he was also the presiding judge in Johnson versus Macintosh. What happened in Johnson versus Macintosh? Uh, it would be a long story. I really wouldn't want to be getting into those facts. But what I have done, I believe you have already got a copy of one of the major uh, basis of his decision in that particular case. If you go through it, I don't know what image are you going to have having reached the conclusion or the last bit of this passage. Some of it is really self-explanatory, but I want you to have a look at this from the perspective of the author who is, who is active in this particular passage. From whose perspective is the judgment being written here? It's the perspective of the European people. So have a look at the justification that uh, Chief Justice Marshall has given here. He says that the continent that has been discovered 
is the first one. And we understand that there is serious competition that is going on among European nations. So who gets the title? Who gets the title? Whoever discovers it. From all those great European nations, whoever discovers it acquires title. However, he then recognizes that there is sufficient amount of land there. So even if all the Europeans be there, I mean, there shouldn't be any problem because the division can be done based on the same criteria that I just laid out. The division can be done based on, again, discovery. Whoever discovers uh, whatever part of certain territory uh, gets a title over that particular piece of territory. I'm sure many of you would be familiar that uh, geographical identification is a way. Our land ke je abishkar kore tar name, ekta jalo prapat ke je abishkar korte se tar name, our more or less identify kore thaki. Nodi even, Hudson River, for example. So whoever discovers it gets a title. So the important thing to focus here is not the perspective of the Indian people as if for the judge, the Indian people never existed. Because all heavily stuck in favor of the European people. They want to discover, they're in a competition, there's vast amount of land, so whoever discovers gets title to it. The question is, where is the perspective of the Indian people? They don't even exist. And towards the end of the paragraph, if you, if you have already reached there, you shall find out it says the principle was that discovery gave a title to the governments by whose subjects or by whose authority it was made against all other European governments which title might be consumed by possession. So how did the European governments acquire title to it? I mean, of discovery. And how did they remain, or how did they safeguard their title to the land that they have already discovered? They safeguarded their title to the land by means of consumption. So now, European people, they are consuming the land. Indian people, they were using the land. So is there any difference between user of the land and consumption of the land? Ramra Bullets is a user of the land that is not a good enough title. Primarily, consumption of the land uh, can be referred as cultivation of land. <coughs> so, European people, they discovered this vast territory of land. They acquired title over it. And how did they safeguard their title over those land? They safeguarded their title over those land by means of cultivation which the native Indians failed to do. Because the native Indians, according to popular European belief, they were not cultivators. They were hunters. They were hunters. Uh, uh, they were, or they would collect fruits from the jungle without really cultivating the land. But these European people, they discovered these lands, they discovered the cultivable lands, they cultivate those lands, and by doing it, they're consuming their possession, which the Indians have failed to do, and by means of effective consumption of their possession, 
stronger title compared to whatever title the Indians might claim. So that was uh, Johnson versus Macintosh. As I said, two European white men litigating against each other, a white judge of European descent deciding the case, and uh, in all those activities, the only thing that is missing is the perspective of the Europeans, uh, of the Indians, rather, I should, I should say, yeah. So, doctrine of discovery, colonialism, and international law, quite simply, it started with discovery, exploration, and uh, then all those dynamics of differentiation and equalization. And when it came to property rights, it was again uh, a process of going back to where it all started. Uh, we all went back to discovery again. And um, I was having an interesting chat with Arman, and I was uh, telling him that uh, this uh, process never ends. So perhaps uh, against this particular context, we can think of that unending process of colonization, particularly keeping into mind the two major dynamics employed in any colonization enterprise, which are differentiation and equalization. Thank you very much. Uh, interactive session, interactive session tick. Uh, Question misconception when he was referring to Indians, Indian was in this is not this India. It's not America. I mean, एसेंसियल कैरेक्टर डिफाइंड हम समय रेनेसार जो डेफिनेशन रेनेसार साथ रिजन के डक्ट्रिन अफ डिसकवर से हिमैन कैरेक्टर मूल जैसे से कथा थे ये हम प्रथम प्रश्न और द्वित हे परवर्ती लैंडर सा लैंडर पर क्लेम सेटार ऊपर तो विस्तर आ कि पर्याचना समालोचना और हे इंगलैंड हब्स के शुरू कर परवर्ती विस्तर आलोचना हो क्यों अमेरिकाना डक्ट्रिन अफ डिसकवर ते फेरत जाण अलरेडी क्रिटिसाइज यक्ट्रिन अफ डिसकवर जो दार्शनिक अनुमानगुली और यहाँ हे सेकेंड प्रश्न तृत्य प्रश्न और प्रथम प्रश्न साथ रिलेटेड से जदि तरा भेबे थे जरा आसल ह्यूमैन बींग रिजन आरा रिजन के जस्ट एप्लै कर जो थे ताके जैसे दास हिसेबे व्यवहार करटार जुक्ति हिसेबे से क्यी दाड़ करा परवर्ती तो अने के सोशल यूजेंसिसरा जे डारे परवर्ती आसल ह्यूमैन बींग हाफ ह्यूमैन बींग तो कन्ट्राडिक्शन टीजे आलाप जानते चाहिए और जदि कारो प्रश्न था आलोचना पर आलोचना एख होते सर उत्तर दिल तर होते रेज योर हैंड कम अफ फ्रांसिस भिटोरिया कि तरह साथ ही कोकम इंटरक्शन चेषा कर निश्चय तेरे को गोष्ठीपति तर निजस्व कोकम किस निश्चय छो हतो यूरोपियन एसपेक्टे देखा जा तर मत अत सीविलइज किस ना क्योंकि तरह तो निश्चय दलपति तर निजस्व को सिसटेम छो तो अनुजाई तरह तर मालिकाना तरह विषयगू तरा ओबा नियंत्रण करत 
তো ফ্রান্সিস ভিটোরি তাদের সাথে ওইভাবে ইন্টারাকশন করার চেষ্টা করছিলেন না শুধুমাত্র তাদের যে হ্যাঁ ইউরোপিয়ানরা আমরা এভাবে চালাচ্ছি সো পৃথিবী সব এভাবেই চলবে এরকম ব্যাপারগুলো থেকে তারা সিদ্ধান্তগুলো নিয়েছেন থ্যাংক ইউ আমার প্রশ্ন হচ্ছে স্যার যখন হচ্ছে এই ডক্টিন অফ ডিসকোভারি ইউজ করে স্প্যানিশরা বা পর্তুগিজরা এই তাদের অভিযানটা চালায় এবং ল্যান্ডগুলো ডিসকোভার করে ওখানে তাদের শাসনটা কায়েম করতে চায় ওইখানের সাথে যে কলোনিয়ালিজমটা কীভাবে হচ্ছে একত্রিত হয়ে যায় এবং তাদের ইন্টারন্যাশনাল লটা ওইভাবে কীভাবে হচ্ছে মানে এটা চালু হয় সেটা ব্যাপারে আমি আসলে বিস্তারিত পাইনি আপনার লেকচারে সেই সাথে আমি তা চাইবো যে এই ডক্টিন অফ ডিসকোভারি যেহেতু আপনি বললেন যে অরিজিন অফ ইন্টারন্যাশনাল লটা শুরু হয়ে গেল তাদেরকে কীভাবে শাসন করবে ইসমানিসরা ওই জায়গা থেকে সেটাকে যদি একটু আর একটু বিস্তারিতভাবে বলে যে কলোনিয়ালিজম এবং এই ইন্টারন্যাশনাল লটা পুরোপুরি আমাদের এই বৃহৎ পরিসরে ইউরোপ বা বলেন এই আমাদের সাব কন্টিনেন্ট যে ইন্ডিয়ান ব্রিটিশ পার্সপেকটিভে কীভাবে এসে গেল সেই ব্যাপারে হচ্ছে আমি আর কি জানতে চাই স্যার আপনি আপনার লেকচারে বলেছেন যে ভিটোরিয়ার জাস্টিফিকেশন ছিল যে তাদের কালটিভেশনের কোনো কালচার ছিল না সেখানে তাদের কনজামশন কনজামশনের কোনো রেকর্ড নাই কিন্তু আমরা জানি যে লাতিন আমেরিকাতে হচ্ছে দুইটা ডমিনেটিং দুটা এম্পায়ার ছিল এবং সিভিলাইজেশন ছিল যেটাকে একটা হচ্ছে ইনকা সিভিলাইজেশন আর একটা হচ্ছে মায়া সিভিলাইজেশন এবং বর্তমান সময়ে আর্কিওলজিক্যাল এক্সকাভেশনের মাধ্যমে বেশ কিছু রেকর্ড পাওয়া গেছে যে তাদের মধ্যে একটা সফিস্টিকেটেড ওয়ে অফ কালচারেশন ছিল এবং সেইটাকে হচ্ছে ভিটোরিয়া কীভাবে মূল্যায়ন করছে আমি চাই না এই বিষয়ে স্যার একটু কিছু বলবেন আর আরেকটা বিষয় হচ্ছে এই বর্তমান সময় যে ও কিছু না একজন বলছে যে আমাদের পাহাড়িদের যে বিষয়টা এখন পাহাড়িরা তো ওইভাবে ল্যান্ডটাকে ইউজ করে না সেই হিসেবে কি এখন যদি যারা মেইনে আমরা যারা আসি বেঙ্গলি পিপল এথনিক বেঙ্গলি তারা যদি এখন ওই 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 ফর্মুলাটা থিওরিটা অ্যাপ্লাই করে যদি এখানে ইনভেস্ট করতে চায় সেটা কতটুকু জাস্টিফাইড হবে ওটা করা যাবে কি না আদৌ some very interesting questions and uh, some really difficult ones as well however i think i'll start with 
the easier ones, easy to dispose ones. Alternative sources of international law. Our major question is how to write international law. When we talk about international law, and the people who have written about international law are mostly Europeans. Even our international law class, we have a lot that whatever we are going to talk about under the banner of international law is primarily European international law. The institutions, the rules that we follow in international law, even today, were mostly uh, framed by the Europeans. As a result, I mean, think of the institutions, uh, think of uh, the United Nations, think of the League of Nations, think of uh, the Geneva Conventions, even. I mean, were there any other contribution but the European ones? These days, we try to suggest that the principles that we can find in all those European international law might actually be found in some other sources spreading all over the world, primarily Indian subcontinent. So Amunna Je Amra complete denial Juge but it's an uphill battle. There are people, there are scholars who are fighting against that particular notion that international law is European international law. There are people who are fighting against it. But the institutions, the, the achieve, uh, uh, perhaps achievements of the like uh, credit worthy, but nonetheless, I mean, the rules that they have established, regular against a fight for an alternative vector framework, dark corner, that's something that has been one of the major challenges and perhaps limitation. But Amunna, the A discourse that Amunna keo challenge for na, I'm going to say that could be popular at a challenger jaga, jeta bisher shudhumatro non-European scholar je kurte se thana. Borong uh, even on a uh, European descent uh, scholar uh, uh, a framework ta ke challenge kurtas ne mung tarang mona koren je non-Europeans they had equal contribution in framing international law. I mean, uh, I have failed perhaps miserably uh, if I have failed to uh, get across this, that message. Uh, when I talked about uh, the Indians and the Spaniards and how their interactions were governed, uh, one of the ways of looking at it would be how central the, Europe, the Indians were into making the Europeans realize their notion of certain other things. I mean, Ami Jokun Bultasi, property shathe. Action big the title key have I'm able to see you okay uh, discovery and then uh, perhaps consumption of the land that can be a basis of title I mean it's not only against the Indians that we are appreciating uh, the properties of certain legal concepts but the Europeans they are also developing their understanding of that particular legal concept. I did not talk about uh, sovereignty, but uh, perhaps that could have been talked about. And again, the very concept of sovereignty, when we use it today, and how it is understood today, the Indians would be as much relevant as the European ones. Because the Indians, they played their role, perhaps a very central role, in making the Europeans understand what sovereignty was. So, state ki hote pare, state 
অর্গানাইজ লিগাল সিস্টেম কী হতে পারে এটা তখনই বোঝা যাচ্ছে যখন ইউরোপিয়ানদের স্টেট এবং অর্গানাইজ লিগাল সিস্টেম নাই রাইট যখন আমরা জানতেছি যে এদের এই স্টেট এবং লিগাল সিস্টেমটা নাই সো তখন ওই না থাকার এগেনস্টে আমরা কম্পেয়ার করতেছি যে এদের যে ক্রাইটেরিয়াগুলো নাই বলে আমরা বলতেছি যে এদের স্টেট এবং লিগাল সিস্টেম নাই এই ক্রাইটেরিয়াগুলো আমাদের আছে অথবা যেগুলো আছে সেগুলো এই লেভেলে পারফেকশন লেভেলে যখন পৌঁছাই তখন আমরা বলতে পারবো যে ওকে দিস ইজ এ ফাংশনিং অ্যান্ড ইফেক্টিভ লিগাল সিস্টেম দ্যাট ইজ অ্যাবসেন্ট ইন দ্য ইন্ডিয়ান সিস্টেম সো ক্যান উই থিঙ্ক ফ্রম দ্যাট পার্সপেকটিভ সো ক্যান উই থিঙ্ক that the indians they made the europeans realize what ownership of property was can we think from that perspective so indian their concept of ownership nai property law ownership property law concept nai seta dekhe to european realization ta je tahole amader hoyto property law ostito ache ekta framework ache then so perhaps thinking from that perspective the indians or non europeans in general they become a central figure and they perhaps are equally important in international law discourse then but any at a movement intellectual level a scholar der modhe already ache amra khub popularly 12 boli etake and uh, then again say, what i said it's been a difficult চ্যালেঞ্জ কারণ এত দিনের এস্টাবলিশড একটা ফ্রেমওয়ার্ক ভেঙে হয়তো কোনো একটা পর্যায়ে আন্ডু করে নতুন একটা ফ্রেমওয়ার্ক এস্টাবলিশ করাটা ইটস গোয়িং টু টেক এ ইফোর্ট অফ লংয়ার পিরিয়ড অফ টাইম সো পারহ্যাপস আফটার উই ফিনিশ টু ডেজ সেশন ক্যান থিঙ্ক অ্যাবাউট ইট অ্যাজ এ লং টার্ম প্রজেক্ট Arman raised a very important question that uh, colonialism, international law. I mean, that's a whole lecture. I'll have to rerun the lecture. However, the point I said that these people are different. These people, uh, are di- since they are different, our law does not have any application against them. So we need a different legal framework. It's a different people, perhaps different uh, state. Who knows? I mean, Amra Indian Rado, whether they had a state or they were capable of having a state, we haven't answered that question. So Tai Jodi Hai, Tahule are two interesting comment by question Mona Ita Shate attacked who is the whether they consulted the local heads of the Indian people. Of course they did. Of course they did. Particularly, I can recall the Dutch practice. The Dutch practice was different from the Spaniards one. Whenever the Dutch, they discovered any land, they entered into a formal contract with the local chiefs. So perhaps in case of Dutch practice, by the Dutch feeling the necessity of entering into a legal instrument with the local chiefs, perhaps that can be uh, another way of recognition of the sovereignty that might lie with the native Indian people as well. So I mean, ইউরোপিয়ান ডাচ পিপল তারা যখন মনে করতেছে যে ওকে আমি এই পিপলগুলোকে কমপ্লিটলি ওয়াইপ আউট করে তাদেরকে ডিসপোজেস করে তাদের প্রপার্টি কন্ট্রোলে নিয়ে নিতে পারি বাট তারা সেটা যখন না করে তারা মনে করতেছেন যে অ্যানাদার ওয়ে অফ ডিলিং উইথ দোজ পিপল উড বি বাই এন্টারিং ইন্টু কন্ট্রাক্ট সো কন্ট্রাক্টে আমরা কখন এন্টার করি কন্ট্রাক্টে যখন তখনই আমরা এন্টার করি যখন আমরা অপর পক্ষকে আমরা ইকুয়াল মনে করি বিকজ কন্ট্রাকচুয়াল ফ্রেমওয়ার্ক ক্যান নেভার ফাংশন উইদাউট বোথ দ্য পার্থ ইজ বিং পারসিভড অ্যাজ ইকুয়ালস সো ডাচরা যখন ল্যান্ড ট্রানজ্যাকশনে যাচ্ছে তারা কিন্তু লোকাল পিপলদেরকে লোকাল ইন্ডিয়ানদেরকে তারা 
ইকুয়াল পিপল হিসেবেই রেকগনাইজ করতেছে অ্যান্ড দ্যাটস এ লিগাল রেকগনেশন what was the bargain that's a different thing they were absolutely uh, ridiculous bargains at times ekta bargain ami recall korte pari je ekhane native people der sathe land related ekta settlement hocche je ekhane bola hocche je current chief jini achen current chief ebong tar onno sokol people ebong bhobishyote joto people তাদের আসবে সকল পিপল এগ্রি করতেছে যে তারা এই প্রপার্টির উপরে তাদের যত ধরনের সত্য থাকতে পারে সকল সত্য তারা পরিত্যাগ করতেছে এই ইউরোপিয়ান পাওয়ারদের ফেভারে কনসিডারেশন কি কনসিডারেশন হচ্ছে টু পিস অফ ক্লোথস আমরা ওই অংশটা যদি বাদও দিই যে মাত্র দুই দুই প্রস্থ কাপড়ের এগেনস্টে হিউজ একটা টেরিটোরি লম্বা সময়ের জন্য ইনপারপেচুইটি ট্রান্সাকটেড হচ্ছে আমরা যদি ওই অংশটা বাদও দিই লিগাল জায়গা থেকে রেকগনেশনের জায়গাটা দেখি যে অ্যাটলিস্ট দেওয়ার ওয়ার সাথ ইন ইউরোপিয়ান পাওয়ার্স হু বদার্ড হু কেয়ার টু থিঙ্ক অফ দোজ নেটিভ পিপল অ্যাজ ইকুয়ালস দে কেয়ার্ড টু এন্টার ইন্টু লিগাল ইনস্ট্রুমেন্টস সো দ্যাট ক্যান বি এ ওয়ে of uh, thinking that local sovereignty perhaps european sense a sophisticated na holo at least at a nascent level a native native sovereignty ekta concept thaktei pare ebong dutch practice ta more or less native ebong nascent practice of sovereignty tara onek khetre recognize koreche uh international law colonialism eugentium as i said eugentium it at a overarchical at uh, a common framework hisebe jodi amra establish korte pare tahole religious divide but je kono basis e divide ar thakte chena right amra bolte si eugentium hocche reasoning capacity reasoning capacity is common to all human races এখন ইউজেন্টিয়াম এর কন্টেন্ট কি দ্যাট ইজ ডিবেটেবল বাট যদি হিউম্যান রিজনিং ল ফ্রেমওয়ার্ক হয় কন্টেন্ট হ্যাঁ কলোনাইজেশন এরাতে ইউজেন্টিয়াম এর কন্টেন্ট ছিল ইউরোপিয়ান বিকজ গো ব্যাক টু দ্য লেটার অফ কলম্বাস দ্য লাস্ট পার্ট অফ ইট সাইড নো অপোজিশন ওয়াজ অফার টু মে we are establishing this common framework of eugentium primarily the europeans they are establishing this common framework of eugentium amra eta bhabar kono jaygay achi kina the eugentium eta common framework tara toiri korbe eta content tara bole dibe na eta bhabar moto bokar moto ekta jaygay amra achi kina tara jodi framework ta toiri korte korte pare they are going to fill it up with the content of their own choosing and again perhaps no opposition would be offered to it or at least no opposition was offered in the late 15th century early 16th century or better part of it so eugentium that being used as an overarchical colonizing legal framework all the contents were european contents and the contents were those only that suited european interest the best so perhaps that's how you can establish the relationship between international law and colonialism because it was the legal language religion to byabohar kora jabe na karon dui ta people dui religion er সো লিগাল ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ ব্যবহার করতে হবে লিগাল ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ হচ্ছে ইউজেন্টিয়ামের ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ ইউজেন্টিয়ামের ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ করার ব্যবহার করার মাধ্যমে আমরা কী বলতেছি যে আলটিমেটলি এই পিপলরা সিভিলাইজেশনের সর্বোচ্চ পর্যায়ে কেন পৌঁছাইতে পারতেছে না দে আর মাইনর রাইসেস সো তাদেরকে সর্বোচ্চ পর্যায়ে পৌঁছাইতে হবে দিস ইজ আওয়ার গ্রেট বার্ড এন দ্য হোয়াইট ম্যানস বার্ড এন্ড আই এম শিউর ইট উইথ ইট 
So these are all uh, legal terminologies then the Europeans they are using against the Indians. I think could be a bhalo ekta question chilo jokhon towards the latter part um, Jahid asked me about whether there were alternative concepts of ownership. Actor Jagai perhaps our methodological actor jump chilo. I don't know whether um, some of you have uh, noticed it or not. I jumped in a temporal scale. I started talking about the latter 15th century, early 16th century. But Jahun uh, judicial recognition of discovery ni bolati. From that point, I jumped into the first half of the 19th century. So within that jump, I have actually missed many of the narratives of ownership. However, the common link that you can establish, or perhaps one of the common links that you can establish, would be to have a look at uh, John Locke. I'm sure um, he was uh, actually referring to John Locke's discourse of uh, ownership of property idea as well. John Locke, uh, we uh, I mean, uh, he had the same kind of thinking. Because when he talked about uh, ownership to property in relation to land in particular, and uh, his idea was that uh, ownership could be established by mixing your labor with the property that you want to possess. So then again, perhaps, the latter idea of consumption that I was talking about, I mean, hunting and apple picking, let's say, it is a level of lever intensity, perhaps, or at least our idea that I want to say, the European cultivation, greater level of labor take a land associate with the say. I mean, Gatsutala take a fall kuriye sheta nijer title dabi kora ar tin maash, char maash purishram kore ek prostho dhan utpadun kora labor intensity jayega take a at least law could understand it that way that greater labor investment ho chay amar in case of cultivation of land er khetre. So that's the intervening principle, idea of ownership that I have leapt frogged, uh, but uh, anyone who is interested uh, should have a look at John Locke and his idea of private property. Uh, that's something extract already paid to I refer to it. Uh, essentially, uh, at least Locke uh, I haven't really uh, touched upon him, but he is important. Because we temporal line. the greatest Right? Seventeen seventy-six. Eh? It's no longer in. Uh, it is no longer a British colony. Go back to Locke. Locke's uh, denial of Indian title over land was based on labor. Think of Locke now as a colonial master, because Virginia, uh, British. Company, the Locke was one of the major uh, shareholders. So Locke, native Indian, their land is shathe ta their title ta ke nishesh koyar modhe he had personal interest, and that's the mechanism that Locke 
used. And whatever lock, whatever mechanism lock used, the concept of property in the US Constitution has been greatly influenced by his idea of ownership. Lock, colonial British, British colonial era telikthasan, but we aki idea post colonial US te continue kura jat hai. Even locker idea is subsequently, I found to be existing in Johnson versus Macintosh. Again, perhaps I like information about the judgment here. Book to book, he who the parish is from Porka Dharana the way. Chief Justice Marshall, he himself was a beneficiary of newly acquiring a huge amount of land in the post-independence uh, era. So anything else that attaches or attributes, attributes ownership to land in the colonial era to the Indians would mean that Atharosho uh, Teishe, Chief Justice Marshall, the Niger, we landed the title, Shira Prashno Vidhava. So he couldn't, even if he wanted, he couldn't really question the title of the British colonizers or any other European colonizers. And what was the title that the European colonizers had in relation to uh, the US territory? Nothing but discovery. So those are some of the personal interests, personal poetics, personal vision, or scholarly writings, particularly in case of John Locke, that had contributed in, in uh, reaching to the point where a post-colonial judiciary, the chief justice of it, can officially recognize a uh, doctrine of discovery to be part of domestic legal system and to be part of uh, to be part of the basis of property rights in a post-colonial US. Uh, have I missed any other questions? I would, I would suggest uh, those of you who are really interested in these matters to uh, consult those two books that I have referred. One of the books that I uh, consult quite frequently in my class uh, of international law. The other one, which I came across when I was doing some research on a doctrine of discovery a few days ago. I already lecture the doctrine of discovery. Then I came across uh, about uh, the book by who is it? Uh, Richardson, Wilkinson? Robert? Williams. Yeah, Robert Williams Jr. Uh, I think you can find a PDF of it free on the internet. So do take the trouble of finding it out. And perhaps it might answer a lot of questions that I have failed to address. And I'd be happy to talk about it in length and in person if anyone feels interested.